Hi, I'm in Balkhoresh and I'm talking to Chris Gordon and Hell Laser Bees. everyone, I have the honour and the privilege of the company of Imbar Khuresh um, this evening, a filmmaker, um, to talk about her new film, which is called Birthright. And it's obviously, it's a short, a short film, a 20 minute long film, which is fantastically won an award, which now means it's uh, considered for a nomination for an Oscar as well, which is great. So congratulations for that. Thanks. And it's nice to have you here. It's nice to meet you uh, and nice to talk to you. As I was, like I was saying, I, I've watched the film and it's it's an interesting, it's a very interesting topic because from someone outside, uh, I don't know, I know of the, the birthright uh, and I know I've read stories, I've seen it, but I've not actually been involved in, obviously, in, in that. And I think it's, it fascinates me um, that, you know, it's people, you can, Israel will open their arms to, to people around the world and it's, it's a haven as you would like as you would call it because that's what it's there for it's a it's a um, place where people can come of Jewish people can go back and just and live in Israel <laughs> and uh, it's it's a fantastic uh, I'm trying to I can't get my words out I'm sorry <laughs> I'm trying to get to, you know it's, it's a fantastic uh, thing to do and obviously so your film, I believe, was inspired because there was actually an Israeli organization called Birthright as well. Is that correct? Yes, yes. The film was inspired by the Real Birthright Organization, which is the biggest organization in the Jewish world and is uh, collaborating with the Israeli state to, to give the opportunity for any uh, young uh, Jew from the world to visit Israel for at least one time. That's fantastic. I know I've seen, I've actually read because um, I, I, like, I have a very military mind as well. I love really military stories. I've read several military stories where, where um, people have come across, and that's where I've, I've kind of picked it up from, is people have come from America or the UK or somewhere for their birthright, and then they served in the, in the, in the IDF, for example, which is obviously features in the film. <laughs> and and I, I know I've seen, you know, I've read those stories as well, and it's fascinating how people would come, how people come over and, and, and just, because that's it's, it's it's who you are. It's people who they are, and you know you want to go back to be Israel and feel that you are part of Israel. I believe. Yes, but uh, for me, the film is questioning exactly this. I feel that uh, people uh, from any different background have this this longing to feel belongness or this lack sometimes of the feeling that uh, we belong. And uh, I was trying to approach this from a more uh, uh, I would say universal perspective, and uh, and show how even the birthright trips are, in a way, are are sitting on the same need that that many people have, and uh, even if you're Jewish or or not, you can find yourself outside of the group. Uh, so so I was not uh, aiming to say that to to, to just portray this uh, as uh, like this great phenomenon, yeah. <laughs> but to use to use this as a as like a setup to to ask questions about this need of uh, feeling belong to a group and sometimes how we sacrifice our uh, personal truths in order to to be part of the group. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I hope it passed. <laughs> it passed over. It does. Yes, it does very much so. Especially because I am. I believe the story in the film is in, the inspiration behind it is Natalia Olshan. Oh, here we go. Olshankaya. Is it's that Natalia Olshanskaya? Thank you. Sorry for the mispronunciation. <laughs> no problem. So it's, it's based on her story. So can you tell me a bit more about that, of how that inspiration made uh, wanted me to make you make the film? Yes. So it all started quite by coincidence. I met uh, Natasha and Natalia in a, in a film festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a click and we decided to meet later on to grab a coffee together. And that day I realized it's her birthday and I was very surprised that uh, this girl that I meet for the first time is uh, choosing to, to meet me during her birthday. <laughs> and then uh, I realized that she's very new to Israel and she actually doesn't know anyone. So we very fast changed the setting and uh, mm -hmm. we ordered a bottle of wine and started like a small celebration. And then she started telling me her uh, immigration story. And for me, it was shocking because uh, as an Israeli growing up in Israel, uh, it's a consensus to believe that Israel is the Jewish state for the Jews. And mm -hmm. then I meet uh, Natalia that is telling me I'm not Jewish. I didn't grow up as Jewish. 
And yet, because I have one Jewish uh, ancestor, I, I, I have this uh, birthright to, to come and become Israeli. Mm-hmm. And, and it was very surprising to me, and I was very curious to learn more. Uh, and I realized that actually there are many, many uh, people living in Israel that uh, are not considered Jews, not in their own eyes, not in the eyes of the state, not in the eyes of the religion. And actually this uh, idea that we have about Israel, that Israel is a Jewish state, maybe is, is not completely uh, real. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it raised for me the question, okay, if Israel is, uh, is deliberately uh, approaching uh, these people from outside of Israel and encouraging them to come and giving them citizenships, why is it so impossible for us to, to give citizenships for non-Jews that are already living in Israel and try to solve our political problems, for example, <laughs> with the Palestinians? I mean, yeah. I know it's not the same, but, but it was just like this, uh, you know, this first idea that I was saying, okay, maybe we can start looking at this whole concept of our identity a little bit different. So for mm-hmm. me, it was like this first crack in the... In the idea of what is Israel and what is the Israeli identity that I wanted to to shed light on. That is good. That's great to hear as well. And something that I did learn as well is because I didn't realize, like you say, that people who were non-Jewish in and that's very in, in in that respect, like they might have had an ancestor or a grand a grandfather mm, or father exactly. that they could come. I didn't realize that either. So it's it is very eye-opening. And it's very, and what I loved about the film as well is because it does show that the group of people obviously go in there and they're all, they've all got their own reasons for wanting to go. they all come from different backgrounds, but you still find that they, there's always still in, in bullying, even between these people who obviously come in from all of them afar, they are still picking on Natasha um, because of a certain thing. Oh, that's most likely born through jealousy due to the situation with, um, with, with the young soldiers. So yeah. Um, you can see it's just great to see that it's not great to see because it's quite it's, it's sad to see, you know what i mean it's sad it's good to see in in an, in a in a film that being depicted that like you say it's it's not all where it's the 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 the, the shining light and the shining and the, and the fantastic opportunity it can be that it's there's a lot of friction there there's people do feel alone and it's a yes. very it can be a very lonely experience and i know one of the books i read that's the young guy, he'd said he'd gone there and he felt he'd gone on his own from America and he, he had the same. He just felt so alone when he was out there because he knew no one uh, and he didn't speak Hebrew. Um, he had to learn because obviously he learned that as well. And it's it's very interesting to watch this on the, on, on the screen. Yes, because in the end, it's immigration and immigration is a difficult thing. And there is something very absurd even to think that, OK, you're coming home to a country that you never visited before. <laughs> yeah. So I, I really wanted to, to show exactly this thing that you are saying now, that uh, in the end, feeling apart or feeling uh, feeling belongness is, is to connect to people. It's not really about uh, being Jewish or not being Jewish. Yeah, I can be very Jewish and still be a complete outsider. We all have our moments that we feel outsiders uh, in front of the group. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. And that's definitely, that's what this film does depict as well. Because what's interesting as well, I don't want to, oh, it's going to end up putting a spoiler in. So don't, you know, if they, I'll say spoiler here. Sorry. It's, it's when, you know, she does meet Shlomi. Um, you've got the two so you've got two people, soldiers coming in and giving the different op- options. And obviously you can see why Shlomi from Galani Brigade, I, I've, I know I've read about them, um, why he's suddenly, you know, he's the dashing, the young, good looking guy. But what's interesting I found as well is, is exactly what you're trying to say. Is, I think is because the girls all fall for him because they think, oh, well, you know, looking at him, they think, oh, he's this grand um, stereotype, what they think is a, a perfect Jewish male. And you know that's why, that's why, because he's, he's in Galani, he's in special, the special force type brigade of, of the IDF, and you know he he look he's really good looking, but yes. it's only when he separate you know you, you find out the I'm not going to spoil the story, but you find out an, a different side to him, and he you know he relates a lot more with Natasha than he would do with those other girls, for example, and and which is it kind of epit- epitomizes what you what you basically said about you know. <laughs> It's being people uh, together with people rather than a, a country. You know, the country is a country, but it's the people and joining those people together, regardless of your background. That's that's the crux, and that's where that's where a nation is made. Exactly. Yes. 
And so yeah, I have to say, I really enjoyed it watching that um, coming through and that storyline. That it, you know, I mean, it's very hard to do in twenty minutes. So how did you find to do that? Because it's obviously short, so a very difficult thing to get a whole story point across in such a short time. Yes, and of course, I felt that uh, I don't have time to show everything that I want to show, and I have to compromise many things, and maybe not to go as deep as I would like to with all of the different characters. Um, but uh, for this reason, exactly, I am uh, developing it to a feature length. So now I'm I'm working on the development of, of the feature length film, and uh, hopefully, it will give me the opportunity to to just <laughs> tell a, a wider story. That'd be really good as well, because I mean, this as I say, the story goes across well in twenty in the twenty minutes short that you've done, which is the point. Um, so to see that in a feature film, I'd I'd really like to see that personally as well, because it'd be nice to see how Natasha develops and how she finds because obviously the, in the short we're still seeing her on the bus trip and she's just going out in the, in that one area um, just to get that little taster and uh, <laughs> and obviously to see how she will actually then manage that further on uh, and and how she basically her life expands as she starts to settle in or not settle in <laughs> as, as, yes. as, it may, as the case may be. Well, we will stay in the trip, but the trip will uh, cross Israel from north to south and not be uh, focused only in one in one area. But it will, anyways, the, the structure would still be uh, a trip. A trip yeah, okay, Israel. okay. Yes, not yet a full <laughs> immigration process. Fair enough. That's we still go because if she goes from the trip to north to south, though, she's still going to be with those same people. So yes. it'd be interesting. I'd like to see and see how those other characters develop as they suddenly the realization hits them a little bit more as well, because I think they're very much the other characters are, um, they're still daydreaming and believing in that. Is that you know you, they've got the, the fairy tale of, exactly. of that's that's in their heads, and whereas Natasha is very grounded, I, mm -hmm. I think. Yes, exactly. And I also think, you know, it also left me great because it leaves you thinking because there's obviously the phone call that Natasha had early on. And again, I'm not going to spoil it for people, but it's, mm -hmm. that, but it's, it left me, it leaves people thinking, you know, what's her background about why was she, why is she doing it? Not just the fact that she's there. It, it, you want to understand why, what her reason for, for going and what her reason for leaving everything behind just to go. And, and that got me really thinking as well. This is something that was very important for me as well while writing the script, but uh, especially, I don't know about other places, but in Israel we have this, uh, this ethos that uh, to come to Israel is an is a idealistic thing to do. Mm -hmm. And in the end, when people choose to immigrate, they choose from very personal, story, uh, from very personal reasons many yeah. times. I mean, in the end, even when you think about the first Zionists that came to Israel in the 20s, no one leaves his home without having a good personal reason or without having a good personal desire even just to travel and to change. And uh, ideology is al always mixed in our, in our person with our personal desires. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to separate what is ideal and what is, what is just a, a, a personal desire. And I wanted to show that, okay, yes, she's coming to Israel. She's doing this Zionist process that is very ideological, but in the end, She's just an individual dealing with her, with her family, with her life, making her yeah. personal choices to, to improve her life situation in the end. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's like you say, that's immigration. That's what people do. They come, you know, they, they emigrate to another country um, in very similar regards because they want to make a better life for themselves. And that's obviously what Natasha wanted to do within Israel, but obviously with, the, with the, that behind her of the ideology of you know of, of her father being Jewish so she she had that with her there she was still carrying that um, but I don't think she was under any illusions uh, about, about, about the about the full ideology of it she you know and it was great and I, I did look that's the, the character development in such a short space of time was very very good and I mean obviously you've shown this now at several obviously going through the film festival so you've Won, I can't remember how many awards you've won now. You've won several awards now for this, haven't you, for this film? I won, yeah, quite a few. That's fantastic. I was going to name them, but I, I've, I've, there, there are quite. I'll just say that there are lots of congratulations. It's you know to, 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 to be able to win, to go to be screened in a festival is a, is you know a, a great achievement. But then to obviously come out with the awards and especially with the Oscar, not um, well the consideration for a nomination for an Oscar is is, yeah. is is perfect as well, which must be a huge feeling for you. 
uh, and spur you on to make the feature film? Well, uh, you know, it was this year of, uh, of screening everything online and uh, <laughs> having the festival round from home and uh, getting notifications about the awards through Instagram. So <laughs> it wasn't so uh, so sparking. But, uh, <laughs> but of course, it's always a pleasure to to have the, screen, the, the film uh, exposed to more audience. And uh, of course, it's always a pleasure to get a positive feedback from the jury and uh, Yes, it's great, and uh, it's pushing me for for the next for sure. Fantastic! Is there any way that people will be able to see this themselves? Who are what, who'd like to go out to watch the film? Is it going to be distributed? Um, at the moment, it's not open yet uh, mm-hmm. online, but uh, but I hope in the near future. And uh, in the meanwhile, we can just we can just connect on social media, and uh, I will uh, I will update fantastic that's great so if, yeah so that'd be great it's, we share i'll share your details out as well and that i do Amazing. this so people can follow that and and, and follow the story as well because it is as i say it's a, it's a story that's fascinated me and and i know i've talked a lot i talk a lot sorry <laughs> <laughs> no, not at all. um so yeah it's as i say it's in seeing just those differences and how clever that you're writing you know without being sycophantic your you're writing is very clever in just keeping those characters separate and, and like you say especially with Shlomi and um, mm-hmm. the main character and you know just not being who people might think he is at first <laughs> yes <laughs> to put it in a non-spoiler in non-spoiler way yes but again it's that connection so I mean I take I take it was there a real life Shlomi for Natasha uh for Natalia even um well there was a real Shlomi that I was uh that I was taking from the research into the into the writing, but this exact story never happens. I mean, <laughs> what what I can say is that uh, all of the characters were were research research uh, based, and uh, some even were non actors that uh, really mixed their personal stories with the with the script, and it was a complete collaboration uh, in the writing process with the with the actors, especially with Natalia, but. Uh, but as well with the other non-actors that uh, joined uh, later on, and um, but but besides that, it was all my <laughs> my imagination. Excellent, and it is great as well because Natalia does play the leader of Natasha in the role as well, doesn't yes. she? So that's is, is very touching and very personal. Um, it brings something very personal to the film too. Yes, completely. Excellent. How? How long did it take to film? How long were you filming for? Um, we were shooting six days. Okay. Yes. Being quite. <laughs> an yeah, yeah. Space. It was intense because uh, we we took the entire crew and the, all this group of uh, of non actors to the desert. So we had a real experience of like living all together in this uh, Bedouin camp with uh, with a group of twenty. Uh, <laughs> Russian speaking non actors that we collected <laughs> from different places. So that didn't know each other before it started. And then we had a very similar experience to the real birthright trips because we had a group uh, building up from day to day, from night uh-huh. to night, you know, romance affairs starting to, <laughs> to appear seriously. Wow. <laughs> it was like a real, a real journey uh, that Excellent. we went together. Brilliant. You could have just filmed those and just said, <laughs> yes, you know, there are many, many moments that I was very sad that I don't have enough time to just <laughs> tell my my dp just leave the scene let's shoot <laughs> let's yeah. just take the camera there you know because uh, the, the natural things that happened over there were uh even more exciting <laughs> than my script really <laughs> It's funny to see when you bring it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's that's, it does sound great. I guess that again brings a bit more personal to the film because those people could identify more than, as I say, especially if some weren't actors, but yes. they, they could then identify themselves with the characters straight from your script. So it was it very, very personal stories and very personal um, outlook. Oh, I think that's the word I should be using. <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting what kind of words to use. Sorry, it's just, <laughs> my vocabulary just dies on me sometimes. <laughs> well, I, I trust you in English. I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I really wish, to be honest, I've got to say this. I'll say this now. Is that I, I wish if I learned Hebrew. My father was a minister, and he learned Hebrew uh, as part of what he in his um, studies that he did to to learn religion. And it's a uh, fascinating language, but I, it's 
for someone like me I, i'm a linguist i speak german but i didn't speak yeah. hebrew and i always wanted to <laughs> uh, okay is there anything that you would like to say though before i finish the recording of this interview it's been very fascinating talking to you anything you'd just, like to say to people just um that uh, i hope that i will have more opportunities to to show the film to the public and uh, thank you for taking the time <laughs>